Hey everyone! In this video series I'm showing you how to create a stylus tree in Blender 2.8. In the last two parts we created a low poly and a high poly mesh. Now we're going to do the shading, baking of normal and creating a diffuse texture. So let's start by switching into the shading tab. If you have watched some of my previous videos you know that I like to work with vertex colors. Vertex colors are in my opinion an easy way of getting the sculpted details into a diffuse texture map. First let's select a high poly sculpted version of the tree and add a material to it. I will use the existing one which isn't currently used by any other object. Now we can create a new node with shift A. In the menu we choose the attribute node under input. Now with the high poly tree selected we can switch into the vertex paint mode. In the menu on the top we can choose paint and then dirty vertex colors. Now our tree is a lot more darker than before. If you're not familiar with vertex colors a little detail on the side. Vertex colors are color information for each vertex. This way, vertex colors can be used without unwrapping an object or adding any texture map. Currently, these dark colors are only visible in vertex paint mode. To make them visible in render mode, we can access the colors of each vertex with the attribute node we created before and add it as an input to the shader. So what we did was using dirty vertex colors of our sculpted tree and then added them to the base color of the principal shader. This way, the base color contains the sculpted details. Now we can simply bake the vertex colors as diffuse colors. To do so, select the low poly tree and add a material to it. Then create a new image texture with Shift A Texture Image Texture. Click on New to create a new image. Name it and change the size if you want. I will go for a 2K image and in the end click on OK. On the left side you can choose your image in a drop down. Currently it is completely black. Now we're all set for baking. Switch into the render context and change the render engine to cycles. Currently Eevee doesn't support baking. If you're watching this video at a later moment, maybe better than it's possible, but for now we will have to use cycles. First select the high poly mesh, then with holding shift the low poly. Change the bake type to diffuse and disable direct and indirect lighting. Also enable selected to active. Here change the ray distance to a small value greater than zero. Also always make sure you have the correct image node selected and then click on bake. Give your computer a few seconds or minutes and you should see the texture in the left. We only assigned one texture to the whole low poly tree, which is why Cycles tries to bake all the information to the leaves. We could avoid this by using different materials, but for now we simply gonna ignore it and fix it later. The baking works fine, but I'm not happy with the color of the texture, so let's see what we can do. Therefore select the high poly mesh again. The attribute node is producing gray values and giving them directly to the shader. So let's put a color ramp in between those two changing the black value to a dark brown and the white value to a light brown. In the 3D view we can directly see the effect it has on the mesh. If you want you can also add some more colors in between the light and the dark brown, adding a bit more variation. As soon as you're happy with the colors, bake again. Again first select the high poly, then shift select the low poly. We can leave all the baking options as they are and click on bake. When the baking is finished make sure to take a close look at the texture. Especially zoom into your texture to check if the ray distance we chose was okay. If you see some flat spots that don't look normal on the parts of the tree trunk, change the ray distance value a bit and bake again. I had to increase the ray distance a few times before getting a good result. Don't get impatient when doing this and don't increase the ray distance too much, otherwise you might get some weird artifacts again. The good thing is, as soon as we found a good ray distance, we can use the same for baking the normal map. Now let's first see how the diffuse texture is looking on our low poly tree. Therefore simply connect the image texture output to the base color of the principal shader. The tree itself looks great, only the leaves not, but as mentioned before we will work on that later. Next let's create another image texture and create a new image, this time for the normal map. I will use the same image size of 2K. The images we create in the node editor are not immediately saved to the hard disk, so always make sure to save them. In the image view you have the possibility to do so. Click on the menu icon, image and then save. Or use the shortcuts shift s or alt s. For baking the normal map I will again display the image I want to bake to by selecting it from the drop down. Then selecting first the high poly tree and withholding shift the low poly tree. Make sure the correct image node is selected, change the bake type to normal, leave the other options as they are from before and click on bake. Now that we have the normal texture we can connect it to the principal shader. We can connect them directly beneath a vector map in the middle to translate the color information correctly. Create a new normal map with shift A and then choose normal map under vector. Connect the image texture color to the normal map color and the normal map output to the normal of the principal shader. 
If you now hide the high poly tree, the low poly tree trunk should look like it has all the details from the high poly tree, only the leaf. So let's fix that. The normal texture simply shouldn't have any information at the parts of the leaves, so we can paint over it in Blender or in any other graphic program. In this case, I thought I would try out Affinity Photo and see how it works. After trying out a few options in Affinity, I used the box tool to select a part and then paint over it. As you can probably see, my Affinity skills aren't really great, but it worked. Next, we want to create a diffuse texture for the leaves. Here we have a few options. For example, we could paint them, which is what I tried first, but somehow I couldn't get the leaves right and wasn't happy with the result. So I used a different approach. Back in Blender, switching to the UV editing tab. Press A to select all UVs and in the menu under UV, choose Export UV Layout. Name the image, for example, Tree UVs and click on Export. Back in Affinity, open up the diffuse texture and add the exported UV layout as a second layer. With this done, we can always see where the leaves are supposed to go on our texture. Now I'm going to use the same method as before and remove all the brown parts that were baked wrong on the parts of the leaves. If you do this, just make sure that you're working on the correct image layer. When this is done, we can add the leaves. If you're now like, wait a second, where's the image of the leaves coming from? Well, after failing many times on painting it, I got impatient and literally went outside to get some leaves. Then I took a photo of them on a white paper, back in an Affinity photo, I tweaked the colors a bit more to make them bright and more stylized, removed the background and using copy and paste to create a nice leaf structure. After that, it's rather simple and you only have to drag the images of the leaves into Affinity photo, position and scale them correctly and in the end also remove the black background of the whole picture. Make sure to save the image in the end and go back in Blender. After restarting Blender, the images appeared correctly in Blender. The normal texture worked perfectly, only the transparent part of the diffuse isn't displayed correctly. To fix this, we just need to change a little setting. First, let's change the render engine back to Eevee again. Then, with the low poly tree selected, go to the material tab and scroll down to settings and change the blend mode to alpha hashed. The tree looks still the same because we currently don't use the alpha values of the diffuse texture. In the node editor, add a transparent shader and a mix shader. Connect the transparent shader output and the principal shader output to the mix shader input and add the alpha values of the diffuse texture as a factor. In the end, connect the output of the mix shader to the material output node and the tree should be displayed correctly. One last thing in the end. If you're planning on using this tree in a game, consider adding another leaf layer looking downwards. To see what I mean, let's take a look at the tree in Unity. After adding the tree to a simple scene and adding a material to it, it looks as expected. But if you look from under beneath the tree up, you will notice that the leaves are invisible from this perspective. This is because the face is normally only rendered from one side. To prevent this, duplicate the faces of the leaves and turn them around to face downwards or use the solidify modifier. I hope you liked this video and if you did, feel free to leave a thumbs up. Besides that, if you have any feedback or wishes for the next video, let me know in the comments.